Seven minutes. Excuse me, are you addressing the fact Exactly. You can see that. So, first of all, uh, when we have, uh, when we test the patient, I test the medial tip uh, to see if, if my natural retinaculum is uh, tight or not. I do <coughs> the quadrant test <coughs> to see the competency of the MPFL. I test if the patella is stable or not. You see that I'm not doing uh, the surgery on uh, patellar pain pool syndrome. And then we do uh, the TT osteotomy. It's a medial incision, it's six centimeter, just medial to the, uh, to the tibial tuberosity. The first time, the, the first step of that surgery would, would be to harvest uh, a brassilis or a semite uh, to uh, do the um, MPFL. And I will tell you that some, uh, it's not rare that I take the semite because I feel that the brassilis is too small. And if your brassilis is, uh, is, a, is, a, is small, I don't like it. I size my MPFL uh, just to know exactly how much uh, I, I need to uh, stitch my MPFL. Then uh, I find the insertion of the patellar tendon. You remember yesterday about the, 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 the BTB and the, uh, the deflection osteotomy. I always look at where the patellar tendon is inserted. And then I draw my uh, tibia tuberosity. So when I draw it, um, I, I, I would say that I did from the uh, insertion of my uh, patella, I drill one or two centimeter below. The second screw would be two centimeter below, and the uh, tibial tuberosity has to be two centimeter below. So it's a six centimeter of a total. Okay. So I, uh, I draw it with my knife. <coughs> Uh, I uh, push a little bit the periosteum just to expose the bone and then I will uh, uh, drill my uh, holes. Uh, so I take exactly the ruler and I do that every two centimeter. So the first is a drill uh, 3.5 perpendicular to the uh, tibial shaft. Second screw perpendicular to the tibial shaft. It's fundamental because when you will screw it, you will keep uh, the, the direction. And what is very, very important when you do uh, uh, <coughs> tibial tuberosity osteotomy is to do two small holes at the, uh, at the distal part of your tibial uh, tuberosity because you uh, will prevent from any uh, stress fracture when you, when you cut your TT also the video. Everybody is afraid about that. If you use two small holes, you will go from one hole to the other one, and you will not damage the cortical of your tibial shaft, definitely. So this is very, very, it's a small trick, but it's so important to, uh, to use it. So we, we do one, and we do another one. So this is the limit, the distal limit of my uh, uh, tibial tuberosity. When I have done that, uh, I, I, I will use a 4.5 uh, drill, monocortical, because I want to put some compression on my, uh, on my screws. This is the head sinker to uh, put the screws in the bone. I don't use any washer, and uh, then I will be able to do the cut. So with the cut, I go from, you see, from one hole to the other one, with a small, uh, with a small uh, uh, saw, and the lateral cut is 45 degrees inclination, so I will be able to go in the cancerous bone. Very important for healing. And I go from the lower, uh, lower uh, hole to uh, the patellar tendon insertion portion, and then the medial cut would be a flat cut. It's a flat cut because I want to majorize, I want, I want to be able to majorize my, uh, <coughs> my tibia tuberosity. <coughs> so <coughs> the orientation of the two cuts are, uh, uh, are diff definitely different. When we have done that, we uh, will detach the, uh, the tibia tuberosity uh, with an osteotome, and uh, it's very easy, just 
uh, do a little bit uh, of that on the osotum, and then you detach from the top, from the top, like the BTB, okay? One, uh, one uh, it, it, it goes very uh, easy. Oh. You see the, the tibia, you see that you can pull down the, the patella, and then you will measure at the, at the distal part of your tibia to the the amount of distalization that you want. So you can cut very precisely 10 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 5 millimeter, whatever you want. You are so precise when you do that. So no risk of patella infera because you have measured everything. And then you put it down, you see that it has to be exactly, it has to fit perfectly so you know that you will not lose any uh, any distance when you do that. And the, 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 the screw <laughs> will be uh, perpendicular to the tibial shaft. You have seen that when I screw my uh, when I screw my screw, I, I do like that with my uh, with my uh, with my uh, screwdriver because it directs my screw exactly to the second hole. If I take the, my screwdriver from from the top, I will move and I will never find the second hole. Uh, so it's a small trick, but it works very well. And you have seen before that uh, uh, we were doing the. Uh, the medialization. <laughs> I missed that. Sorry. Yeah. You see, this is important. Uh, uh, we do the medialization with this tool, and you see exactly the amount of medialization you have done here. Okay? You measure it. So uh, uh, you know exactly how much you distalize, exactly how much you medialize. So you are super precise. That's so true. MDFL reconstruction, you will see uh, very fast how I do. I uh, detach the periosteum on the middle side of my patella. <coughs> I do not open the joint. It's, it, 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 and I do two holes from <coughs> the top of my patella, uh, five, five millimeter uh, below the top of my patella. The second hole is just uh, below uh, the first hole. I don't like, I don't use too much anchors on the patella side. I go monocortical, so it's very solid. I don't have any patella fracture when I do that. And uh, then uh, I pass the, the graft in the, those uh, two holes. You have seen that I, I use a fluoroscopy to <coughs> position my uh, femoral tunnel. I go through the median retinaculum, so the direction of my MPFL is fine. Then I find the second layer, <coughs> pass my graft, and pull my graft in the, in, in the femoral uh, tunnel. And then you see the knee is at uh, 75 degrees, and <coughs> the surgery adapter, angle of flexion. I pass the graft, and I will pull to the maximum the graft. In extension, okay? I pull to the maximum, and I test the pattern. So it's overcorrected, definitely. So it is bad. So what I what I do, I put a cocaire on that side, and then I size the knee ten times, like an ACL. Okay, and then I test again my patella, and uh, if uh, uh, and, and you see that uh, when I test the the, <coughs> the, the patella, uh, the patella is moving. It's not. It, it doesn't correct the patella. It just lock clocks the patella not to dislocate. This is the goal of my MPFL. So I don't care the angle of flexion or fixation. For me it's uh, blah blah blah. Uh, if you are anatomic it's okay. And uh, if uh, you will be perfect and uh, if it clocks your patella this is the goal of MPFL. It's not a realignment procedure uh, for, 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 for sure. So uh, well, that's it.